and welcome to we uh, PowerCalc's webinar today, our deep dive into the fault current calculation. I'm June Adams, CEO of PowerCalc, and today we'll start out with a quick demonstration of the PowerCalc software, including our just launched automatic graphic and simultaneously generated one-line diagram. Then we'll move into a deep dive on our fault current calculation. Today's demonstration will be on a mid-rise residential um, complex. We ask that you hold your questions until the end of the demonstration. Now I'm turning the webinar over to James Khalil, president of PowerCalc and its inventor. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. This is James Khalil, and I guess good morning to the people on the West Coast. Uh, we're going to start uh, sharing the screen here just a little bit. Okay, so the, the screen uh, sharing screen is up, and what you see here right now is the start of the project. Uh, let me actually start from the control panel here. So you start with the project uh, by accessing the, uh, the user's uh, table of the project, and then you select the project that you're going to be working on. Uh, as you see in here now is the project information. This project is what we call it the Middle River, and it's a, uh, a three-story building uh, located in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida, and we use it as a testing right now for our uh, webinar. Uh, to open the, the project, uh, could uh, click on the control panel. Uh, now you see there's two segment uh, screen, one on the left side, which depicts the power distribution system, which we put it together here just for sake of time, but I'll also indicate to you in a little bit, how did we get there? And then on the right side of the screen, uh, there are two buttons right now. These are the uh, functionality that's available for you to execute uh, based uh, for execution based on the screen that you're looking at right now. As you can see on the top in here, there are uh, several buttons. Uh, one of them is the project information. So if I want to go back to the project information, I click on it and it will take me to the project information. And then there's the e-note, short circuit calculations, one line diagram, and the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the PDT and the MDP uh, panel. Below it is the distribution panels, and then below that is the panel boards and the building equipment that are associated with this particular project. As I said, we already preset that project here just for the sake of time. Uh, but if we needed to add a panel or add a circuit, we will go ahead and show how to do that. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a high, a, a mid-rise building, and it's it's a, it's a three stories and consists, I think, of ten apartment units or building units, five on each floor. Uh, this particular project, the first, uh, the uh, second floor and the third floor are um, uh, identical. Uh, so we'll have to, to fill up the panels once and then we we'll go ahead and clone these panels and I'll show you how to do that later. So to access one of the panels, uh, we click on that panel. So now I'm going to go to panel 201. So here is a, a depiction of panel 201 with all the circuit associated with this particular unit. Uh, to start inputting the information, all I need or all the system needs from you as a, as a design engineer or as a, a designer is three inputs per uh, branch circuit. The three inputs are uh, the load KVA, the number of poles, and you can select that from the pull down menu. When you click on the, uh, the pull down menu, it indicates that it's the only available for you here uh, in terms of number of poles is one and two because really the panel is a single phase panel since it's feed, feeding a, a residential or a dwelling unit. So the only number of poles that are available for the designers are one and two. Uh, the panel is preset to a single phase, and uh, when I get to that, I'll show you uh, how to do that. And the third input is the load type. So again, it has a pull down menu. We can select from the pull down menu. Uh, why the load type? The, because really the NEC distinguish between a resistive load and a motor load. So you have to tell the circuit or to tell the system what kind of a circuit uh, this is going to be, whether it's feeding a resistive load or a motor load. Uh, because the overcurrent uh, uh, protection device and the uh, uh, the full load amp will be different from the, the uh, type, depending on the type of load. So let's go ahead and show you a sample of a circuit, I guess. So if we go down here, circuit number 37, right now it's a space, but we're going to go ahead and input uh, three, uh, the three inputs. If you look all the way across the, that particular row, it's blank. There is no circuit values whatsoever. 
So we're going to go ahead and input the three uh, values or the three inputs that is required for the circuit to calculate. So let's say it's a, a 3kW. And then it is a, a water uh, cap, water torpedo. And it's going to be two poles. And it's going to be a resistive load, so we're going to select P1 or P2 or P3. And then at the top here on the black ribbon, we're going to click on Calculate. Now the system or the software is going to populate all the other cells with the branch circuit values. As you can see now, it populated these cells with a two, number 12 conductor, and number 12 uh, ground, and a half an inch conduit. And it calculated the, uh, the voltage drop for you uh, to order for you to maintain the 3% on the branch circuit as recommended by the NEC. Uh, you can only travel 108 feet with this particular circuit and that particular load. Okay, now we input the circuit in here directly to the panel board uh, using the input, uh, these input values on the panel board. Now, the other method which is recommended is actually to go to the one of the wizard that we have. Move this right away. Uh, there is the wizard for the panel board module and the wizard for the branch circuit. So we're going to go ahead and open the wizard for the branch circuit. You see that it is uh, broken down into circuit by circuit in terms of the identification of the panel and the circuit, and then the input. The, the three inputs are required from the user to input into the system in order for, for the uh, circuit to be calculated. Uh, we put values in circuit number 37, so I'm going to go ahead and say now we're going to do circuit 39. So I'm going to select circuits, uh, circuit number 39. It tells me that the circuit is empty. There is no uh, calculation or any values input inside this so far. We go to the row that says input and input KVA. I'm going to go ahead and use the same values that we use for circuit number 37. So it's 3 kVA. And then we're going to go ahead and select the number of poles. It's 2. And then the load type, uh, I believe we selected P1. These are the three inputs that are required uh, from the user to input into the system in order for, it, for the system to start calculating the circuit characteristic. So we're going to go ahead and uh, close and calculate. It will take us to the panel. Now, if I go to that circuit, here's the circuit that we input, circuit number 39. It divided the load KVA by two because we selected two poles. So it did that for you automatically. Each pole will see 1.5 KVA and it's a type B3. Uh, And then the uh, circuit for us is oh, one here. The internet is slow. It hasn't updated the, the screen yet. But it will display to us the same information and we'll get back uh, to it uh, later on. Okay. So uh, we indicated for you how to input a circuit and how you accumulate all these circuits on the panel. By doing that, the panel will uh, calculate the main ratings for that particular load or all these loads on, on that panel and recommend to you the theater size automatically. Uh, and then down here in the calculation block, <coughs> calculated all the circuits for you and list them by the load type. Here's the, the first thing can be a uh, receptacle load and then the, the remaining receptacles and then all the uh, whether it's a lighting, site lighting, uh, power I mean, power load type 1 is 8.2, uh, central heating and so forth they calculated and gave you the total connected load down here and then also the total demand load. 
and then we use this value to calculate the average that is seen by the entire panel. So this particular panel, the demand load was 46.2 and calculated the amps to be 222.1. If we go up here to the panel feed, it already recommended to you a panel with a 225 am frame with a 225 am main and then the corresponding conductor is a number four odd and it tells you also that the four odd is good for 230 amps so that will give you an idea or uh, compare that with the calculated am down here uh, is 222 so they, they, they're, they're comparable and the, that feeder can support the load Uh, other functionality that we included in here is if the panel is over 42 circuits, uh, you can always uh, go and set up the panel uh, to be 60 spaces or 80, up to 84 spaces in one panel. Or if you want them to be uh, uh, two panels, uh, feed through or, uh, or double logs, you can also do that easily. Uh, to do that, uh, if you want more spaces, so if you look at, at, at the panel in here, it's actually this panel is set up for 60 spaces. Uh, but you see that we're not really utilizing all that. I can go ahead and shrink that into 42 if I want to. So I go to the control panel, go to the panel module wizard, go to the panel board features, the last cell with number of poles. It shows 60 right now. I'm going to go ahead and make it 42 and then close and calculate. Okay, so you see that now it shrunk that panel to 42 spaces and also it updated circuit number 37 uh, and and also updated all the other information that is required to be uh, updated according to the last uh, function or the last uh, selection that we have made. Now, uh, to connect this panel upstream to the, uh, to the power distribution system, uh, you go up here to fed from, and right now, again, we preset all this information uh, for the sake of time. But I'm going to take it out and then go back and show you how easy it is to connect this, this panel upstream to the parent panel, which is MDP. So I'll go back and select MDP. And it will give you the number of available circuits uh, to connect that particular panel. So I'm going to select circuit number two and sum it. So now this panel is connected to MDP on circuit number two. If I go to circuit to the MDP uh, circuit number two by clicking on the MDP panel and look at circuit number two, here's my panel 201. Here's the connected, I'm um, sorry, the, the demand load. And here's the trip amp and here's the feeder that is feeding panel 201. Now, if we remember these numbers in here, uh, so I can show you also, if there's a change on 201, the change will take place upstream, downstream uh, as necessary. So if I will go ahead back and open panel 201, say we're gonna go ahead and decided to take the water heater out. And you will see that go down here. If you remember, the, the demand load was 222. Now the demand load is 207 amps. Uh, it takes that information and recalculate all the uh, uh, the feeder calculation and the main required to 
support that, that model. Uh, the, the change was not really of significant change the size of the conductor or the frame for the main ratings. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take some more out. So to say that we decided to take the washer out or the dryer. That's a significant load. So let's go ahead and take it out. Of course, I could have done the opposite. Go ahead and add more loads to show you the change that's going to take place. So right now, there's a change. It went from 225 to 200, and the conductor to, from a 4 odd to a 3 odd. If I go back to panel MDP, which again, there's two ways to do that. Either I click on MDP here, or I can go to the control panel and click on MDP. It will open MDP for me. And if we go to circuit number two, show you that circuit number two, uh, circuit number two, which feeding panel 201. Now the load went down, I think, from 42 to, 80, to 38, and the trip went down from 225 to 200, and the conductor size, and uh, probably the conduit size, has been reduced uh, based on that change. So again, took care of it uh, upstream, downstream, as necessary. Now, the other beauty of uh, Power Calc, it already updated the one-line diagram for you. Now, to access the one-line diagram, you go to Control Panel, click on the one line, Here's our panel 201. It shows, a lot, it shows us that the overcurrent protection device that is uh, supporting or protecting panel 201 on the theater is 200 and it's in position number two on MDP. And if I enlarge a little bit, so let's see exactly the information. Let's see circuit number two, 200 AM two pole circuit feeding 201, panel 201. And then the feeder number is number two. If you go to the feeder table on number two, it says it's three, number three odd, and a number six ground and a two inch content. All this done automatically in the background for you as you only made one change. So imagine that you have plenty of changes uh, that you need to keep track of them if you could do it in a conventional way or using uh, other software that are in the market, you would have to take it all the way from the load uh, at the bottom, all the way up the ladder, I guess, upstream until you get to MDP, step by step. But PowerCalc actually had to form all this uh, calculations for you by a click of a button, basically just changing the load, and it took care of all the other calculations for you upstream and downstream. Okay, let's go back, uh, I'll take out the, uh, the online diagram and go back to the uh, power count. Uh, now, there's another button here, which is the PDT, uh, the power distribution tree. If you click on it, it will show you all the components that, that is in your power distribution system, and it will list them for you uh, in a graphic format to indicate for you what is connected together uh, on the power distribution system and what is not connected. So in this particular uh, example, it's telling me that 202 and 203 are not part of the power distribution system yet. Uh, we set them up, but we have not connected them to a parent uh, panel uh, up the, 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 the ladder of the tree for the power distribution system. Uh, on the other side in here for the MDP, it indicates to you all the panels that are connected to it and all the sub equipment that is connected to any particular, uh, piece of, uh, any particular panel. Now, so now we know that 202 and 203 are not part of that particular power distribution system. So all we have to do is to go to them, open 202, and try to connect it to the power distribution system. If you go to fed from, and you see that the cell is set, is prompt you with the, with the select uh, message. And the, uh, if I click on it down uh, and select a where it is fed from, uh, let's say that we're going to feed it from MDP now. And it's circuit number three, submit. 
Um, so now it's connected upstream to panel MDP at circuit number three. If I go to the control panel and click on the one line diagram, and go to circuit number three, if I again zoom in a little bit. So circuit number three from MDP down now shows me that 202 is connected to it and it's protected by 300 amp circuit breaker and the feeder is number four. By the way, number four is three number 350 and uh, 202 has two uh, pieces of equipment connected to it. So it's listing them separately uh, to indicate the major piece of equipment that are on this particular panel. Now, say that we decided to really combine or sub-feed 202 from 201, that there are two apartments next to each other uh, and they're gonna be joined together. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and go back to panel 202. Open panel 202. And now we're gonna take it away from MDB. And we're gonna actually sub feed the panel from panel 201. So I'm gonna click on 201. It's gonna tell me what the circuits that are available to connect panel 202 to panel 201. So I'm gonna go ahead and select 19, submit. So now panel 202 is subfed from panel 201. If I go to panel 201, circuit 19, is circuit 19, panel 201. If I go to the one line, click on the one line. If you remember, we were feeding panel 202 from MDB. So now panel 201 is, uh, I mean panel 202 is subfed from panel 201. So it took it away, now space, uh, or circuit number three turned into a space that used to feed panel 202. And the one line diagram got updated automatically for you and showed that panel 202 now is subfed from panel 201. And of course, what it also did, it updated all the, excuse me, all the information required uh, upstream and adjusted the feeder size and the overcurrent protection device on MDP and also updated MDP as necessary. So again, you do the change one in one place, the system would, would track it down up the street upstream and downstream for you and make all the appropriate changes automatically. So let's go back to our uh, power distribution. Now, if I click on the power distribution tree, the PDT, you will see now that panel 202 is taken out from the area where things are not connected and showed it exactly where it's connected and fed from 201. Now we can do the same thing for panel 203 uh, and you keep on going until you have completed your power distribution system. Uh, if you see now again, uh, to look kind of a summary, uh, it did all the changes automatically uh, that is related to a one specific change. If you change the load or you change the location of the panel or you change the, uh, the, 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 the uh, where it's fed from, is it from uh, Know, from the MDP or from a, another panel, all that will be done automatically for you uh, with a click of a button. Uh, the building equipment down here, you can fill up the building equipment with the electric characteristics for that particular piece of equipment, and then you can also do the same thing, select where that piece of equipment is uh, fed from. So like this one here, CU201, is fed from panel 201 circuit 33. If we decided to feed it from panel 202, all I have to do is just go ahead and click on 202. And it will tell me which circuit available on 202. And I will call it selected. And now it's connected to panel 202, uh, uh, circuit 36. It changed the panel. It changed the building, uh, sorry, changed the building equipment first. And then went ahead and changed the panel. 
uh, and indicated that particular uh, building equipment is now on panel 202. So I went to panel 202, updated all the information on panel 202, and since panel 202 is subject for panel 201, it went to panel 201 and updated all the information related to that particular change. And since panel 201 is connected to MDP, it went ahead and changed MDP for you automatically because you don't have to worry about anything else. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, fault current uh, short circuit calculations and fault current calculations. Uh, just like that, everything is done by click of a button, and it all starts from the three inputs for each circuit, and then our distribution system builds up itself by itself, uh, depending on your commands in terms of which panel is fit from which panel and which piece of equipment is fit from where, and the system will go ahead and accumulate all these uh, requirements and display it into a one-line diagram for you and build up the one-line diagram. Uh, if there's a voltage drop calculation is necessary, it will do that. And the way it does that for you is based on the NEC recommendation that the, from the source to the load, uh, we should not experience more than 5%. And a 5% voltage drop is broken down 2% on the feeder and 3% on the uh, branch circuit. So if I can direct your attention to circuit number three on panel 201, it indicates that it's for a 3%, I can travel 555 feet for that particular circuit uh, with a number eight conductor. Now, the number eight here is highlighted with red because we have manually taken the, out, the uh, auto functionality for the conductor size and indicated a number eight because we wanted to have a longer distance for that load to travel. Uh, if you compare it with circuit number one above it, uh, again, we change it from a number 12 to a number 10, so we can actually go to 100 feet. And when we went to 100 feet with a number 10 conductor, instead of actually having a 3%, now we're only having a 2.5% voltage drop comparing with what is happening on circuit number three, which has the same load. Uh, you change the conductor, you upsize the conductor, and kept the 3%, I will tell you that the maximum distance that you can travel with that circuit is 555 feet. Okay, so again, it will go ahead and calculate that information, that, that uh, functionality for you automatically, and you don't have to worry about it. If you need more distance, you go ahead and take the auto uh, functionality uh, out, and you put the conductor size that uh, will give you uh, a much longer distance for the, the circuit to travel and minimize the voltage drop, or does not exceed the 3% that is recommended by uh, the NEC. So it will do that automatically for you. Now, if we go back to the control panel, now we're gonna go ahead and perform the short circuit calculations. As you were input all this information into your power distribution system, and whether you knew it or not, the system in the background or the software in the background is calculating short circuit calculations for you based on the distances that you uh, in, 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 in indicated on your circuits for the fields. Now, if I click on the short circuit calculation, it will open the page associated with this particular calculation. And you see on the top here, it says short circuit calculation, and then next to it, this is the method. Now, there are two methods, either automatic or manual. Uh, if you put it on automatic, and you select the transformer from the pull-down menu, and you select your voltage, which is 208, and it's a three phase, and you click on calculation, it will calculate for you the short circuit current available for that particular transformer. Now, it would take that short circuit available as the uh, lift through of the, uh, the transformer. If you see it's 31, almost 31,227, and also the short circuit available, short circuit current available is 31,227. It would take that value as the starting point and calculate the fault available at each of the components in the system from MDP downstream all the way to the panel. Uh, so panel like in our case in here, it would be panel 201, 202, 203, and so forth. And it will list for you on the side here, if I scroll a little bit, it will show you, here is the, at the panel board level, the parent, which is the upstream panel, and then the child is the downstream child uh, panel. 
and then it will give you also the recommended AIC rating for that particular uh, animal. So the calculation reveals to us that there's 6,835 AMs at the parent panel, and at the child is 4,355. So the system or the power cap automatically recommend the AIC rating for the parent to be 10 and for the child to be 22. Well, that's kind of odd because it's way exceeded the 4344. Uh, that tells me that either that the value is set on uh, manually set on 22. So I'm going to go to that panel, which is panel EL. And, and yes, see, if I go to the average atrophic capacity, my design engineer set it up on a manual value. Uh, so that's why it's displaying the 22. But if I go to the control panel, go to the panel wizard module, and go to the panel board characteristics, and you see the AIC has, has been set on 22. So I'm going to go ahead and set it on auto. Let the system do its own calculation kind of thing. So close, calculate. So it changed it to a five, which correspond to the actual calculation. So if I go to the control panel, open short circuit calculations. Go back to the results column. Here's the panel, the parent panel is 7,317, the child is 4,533. It went ahead and adjusted the AIC rating for the child from the 22 that was preset manually to the automatic value to five. That is a tremendous change or a tremendous savings that you're gonna see on that particular panel uh, to go down from the 22 to the five. And that's why it is, uh, critical for us to go ahead and leave it on auto, let the system figure it out for you, and then you can go ahead as an engineer, if you want it to be a minimum of 10 or minimum of 22, you can go ahead and do that uh, and set it up that manual. Now, the other uh, method to do the, uh, the short circuit calculation is the manual setup. So here's the manual setup. If I click on manual and say calculate, Now, it came back with the previous value that was there that, so you can actually input this value uh, manually, uh, 18,042. This is the transformer led through, and that's not this transformer. This is the, uh, the information that you get from uh, FBL or the, the, the utility company uh, of, of your state, of your uh, city or county, and you input it here and then it will calculate the short circuit calculations for you. Or, it, or if you get the short circuit, the false current calculation uh, value from the utility company, you can import it here. Now, by doing that, it recalculated the entire system for us for that particular fault, and it adjusted all the information associated with the power distribution system. Uh, it remained the same, I guess, in here. Uh, if we go down to uh, panel 201, Here's panel 201, is the third row. It's 76, 75, and at the child panel, uh, this is at the, the, the 76, 75 is at, at MDB, uh, and then at the child itself is 65, 47, and of course, since we went over the 5,000, it's recommended 10 and 10 for both panels, as it's shown in here. Uh, now, from this discussion, you can see that really the short circuit calculation is based really on Ohm's law, law uh, which the resistivity, the voltage, and it gives you the current. So the two uh, main factors for the calculations of uh, the short circuit calculation for the fault current is going to be the resistivity or the impedance of the, of the system or the conductors and of course the length of that particular uh, conductor and then the voltage. So if you change the voltage, of course the let through out of the transformer and the available uh, fault current is going to be different 
and if you change the conductor size or you change the conductor length, all this will affect the false current at the uh, particular the piece of equipment. Uh, so let's see that, see like these two in here, these two panels are having the same distance or the same length of conduction. And they have an almost the same uh, uh, fault current available at the child. One is shown 4455 and the other one is 4458. I'm going to take the second one and just change the distance from 120, say, to 60 feet. Okay. And then calculate. back to the result columns too far all right all right so the both were equal before I made the change so the both were showing uh, 4455 and the other one was 4458 uh, I believe so but when we change the distance to 60 feet instead of 120 feet even though it's the same conductor size and the same exactly the same load and the same voltage the available fault at the child has increased to 5437, about a thousand amp higher. Uh, so again, it comes back, and if I look at it again, I guess my designer set it up 122, so I need to go to this particular panel. That's panel 204 and 205, so let's go to panel 205 and put it back on the auto. See, set it on 22, so I'm going to take the functionality out. Uh, of course, I can do it at the wizard, or I also can do it in here on the screen. So we're going to go to auto, select auto, and calculate. So let's go back to the short circuit calculations. you will see there's a difference between the two. One set at five, one set at 10. And by changing the distance. Now, the same effect could happen if you change the conductor size, whether you went up or down, it will adjust the calculations for you and will recommend the AIC. And I think with that, uh, I've demonstrated how the short circuit calculations are happening uh, with power count. Uh, without really going deep into the theory and the requirement in the NEC and the requirement from the industry itself and why do we need to uh, perform these calculations uh, for the sake of time. Uh, I guess subsequent uh, uh, webinars, we will go ahead and really talk a little bit more about the theory and where in the NEC all this is required and why we are performing all these uh, calculations. And with that, I would leave the floor for questions. Uh, hi, James. Um, I got a question. Just to confirm, what is the fault current calculation? Okay, the fault current calculation uh, is a calculation that we have to perform uh, for the sake of preventing uh, fires and uh, accidental death and, and so forth. Uh, we assume basically the worst condition if a, a short circuit happened. And a short circuit happens that you have, in, in, a, in a typical circuit, you would have two conductors. One is feeding the load, and then one is returning the current that as leaves the load. Sometimes, you know, accidental uh, accident can happen, uh, and you would have these two conductors touching each other, or uh, one of the conductors would touch the ground or a neutral. So there's a lot of accidents that can happen. So that means instead of the current going through the equipment itself uh, or through the load to perform the, the functionality of that particular load, now it's short circuited. And that would be a tremendous amount of current going through the circuit itself because there is no uh, impedance or no load to uh, use that energy. Now, we have to put some safety switches, if you will, uh, to interrupt that uh, current if, if, if the accident happened. Uh, 
because it's a, it's a tremendous amount of energy can, that can actually start fires uh, and will actually uh, deteriorate and burn the insulations on the conductors and start sparking and it would be really a life threatening situation. So we would have to build the circuit breaker such that it can interrupt that tremendous, uh, that tremendous amount of energy that's going through it without a lot of destruction happening to the equipment or even to the circuit breaker itself uh, to prevent uh, the, uh, the, the fire from starting. Okay, James, thanks. Um, just one more thing, just to confirm. Uh, the three inputs that you were talking about that the user is required to do within the platform. Uh, could you please go over those three real quick again? Right. Uh, in order for the panels to be built up and the power distribution system to be... What, what's the question, please? Oh, the question. The, the question is, what are these three inputs that are required from the designer to input into the panel, uh, I guess, is, is to show where, where these three inputs and what are they. Uh, any particular load is defined by, by really two things, uh, is the, the, the amount of energy it consumes and the number of poles. Uh, so if you go to any of the panels, you see that the panels are constructed in such a manner that it asks you for these particular three inputs. Uh, and once you input them, it will do all the calculations required, whether it's the branch circuit values, which is here's the branch circuit, and here's all the values associated with the circuit. And then the feeder uh, values, which if you go to the header of the panel under the Python feeder, it will be all the values that are associated with that particular uh, feeder. And then the third one that the three inputs will also calculate is the main ratings, which is these two uh, values, the frame and the main rating. Now, in order for the system to start generating all this information, I need or it needs from you three inputs. So these three inputs are the KVA uh, of the load, the number of poles and the load type. So the way you input that, the recommended uh, uh, method to input these three values is to go to the wizard of the branch circuit inputs, and then you go circuit by circuit, the, it is panel two or three, and then circuit by circuit, and you input these values. So again, we preset all these uh, information. So uh, circuit number one, it's uh, kitchen receptacles. The load is 1.4, is the, no, that's the first input. And then the second input is the number of poles. You can select them from the pull down menu. And then let's select the load type. Again, you have to select it from one of these uh, parameters or one of these values, uh, whether it's a receptacle or it's a uh, spare or is it a, a just a resistive load or a load type, uh, a more load type. Once you select these three values, the system will calculate for you all the branch circuit values, which is the number of sets, the quantity of the conductors, the size of the conductor, the size of the ground, the conduit uh, that is going to house all these equipment, uh, all these conductors and will automatically calculate the voltage drop for you and indicate to you the maximum distance that that circuit can travel to maintain that particular voltage drop. Again, if you want to change them, you have the capability to change all that as your uh, design uh, re require uh, if it's not within these, uh, these parameters. So again, it's three inputs and then it will give you the value of the that particular branch circuit, uh, including the overcurrent protection device to protect that uh, circuit. So if I go and say one of the blank circuits, I can't remember, I think it was 35, 36. Yeah, see, 36 was a space, so there was no KVA, no number of poles, no load type. Let's say that we need uh, to have a 1.5 load. So you put 1.5, select the number of poles, there's two, and the load type is, uh, say, it's a, a immortal load, say it's a fan uh, or something like that. So we'll go ahead and calculate that. Remember, it's circuit number 36. So here's the uh, 
uh, we're going to go ahead and calculate and then go to circuit number 36 and see what it what took place. Okay, so let's go to circuit number 36. Here's circuit number 36. It still says, says the space because I did not update that, but the load type is M. It's two poles and divided your load by two and indicated to you that it's a one set of two number 12 and a number 12 can, uh, ground and a half an inch conduit, 3% voltage drop to 16 feet to maintain that particular voltage drop. And if there was an update in the feeder, it will go ahead and do that for you. Okay. Yes, thank any other, you. Any other question? Okay, so thank you very much and hope to see you next week. Uh, same time. And we keep diving, in, I see. Uh, keep diving into the one line diagram and into the, in the ADC requirement and how PowerCAC can make your life easy, faster, and give you a much better quality product at the end. Thank you very much. See you next week. Mm.